We often hear the stories of how professional rugby players made their transition into business only after their playing days. Seldom do we get the opportunity to speak to someone that is currently playing professional rugby and is in the process of preparing for their life after rugby. It is a pleasure for the Rugby Business Network to speak to backline player for the Ealing Trailfinders in the RFU Championship, Lewis Robling. Lewis, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. Lewis, your time at Ealing is still at the early stages, having only recently moved over from Jersey Reds. Why did you feel you needed or wanted to make this transfer to another club? Uh, there was a few factors that I had to consider. I'm, I'm Welsh originally, mm-hmm. uh, so moving away to, to Jersey was a, was quite a big step because I moved at 22, so it was quite quite young to move away from home. Mm. Um, I was there for three years, uh, enjoyed my time, loved it. Great island, great people. Um, the rugby was good, but at the end of the day, I, I felt like three years away from uh, sort of the mainland was uh, was was quite enough. Um, being able to get home um, was it was a was a hassle. I mean, it, it it would be a flight home. It wouldn't just be jumping the car and it's a couple of hours down the motorway. It was uh, it was quite a big thing. And, and don't get me wrong, I'd like family came over and whatnot, but um, I just felt the need to get back onto the mainland and start playing my rugby mm-hmm. a little bit close to home. Uh, I feel that's probably the, the main reason uh, of coming back. Mm. Well, during the 2010-2011 season, you got the opportunity to play for the Wales under-20 side. What was that experience like? And do you have ambitions to play for the Wales national team? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, that's uh, sort of the ultimate goal as a, as a professional rugby player to be able to play for your country. Mm. And um, by no means have I given up on that goal. Um I mean, I'm still playing, so things can change very quickly in this in this sport, and you catch a break here or there, and and you never know what may happen. So it's just so important to keep your head down, keep working, keep keep that focus, keep that end goal in, in sight, really. Um, but no, definitely, the the under twenties was uh, was an incredible experience. Uh, it was in Italy, so we travelled for f- four weeks, uh, went away for four weeks in Italy, mm-hmm. uh, played against some of the best under twenty teams in the in the world, and. No, it was an incredible, incredible experience. Mm, brilliant. Well, Lewis, your 26th birthday is coming up in October, so you are more or less in the middle of your professional rugby career. When did you start thinking about a career after rugby, and what were the first plans you put into place? Yeah, you don't have to remind me that my 26th birthday is coming up. Don't worry, I'm well aware of that. Um, uh, well, I first decided when it was just before I left to go to Jersey, actually. Um mm-hmm. And my final year at the Dragons, the Newport Dragons in Wales, I, I struggled with injuries. I had two consecutive three and a half month injuries that really was the reason I left I left Wales. And it was that year that I really decided that I needed to, to put something in place. And it was, to be honest, it was the best thing I've ever done because when your sole focus is playing rugby, mm-hmm. you um, you become so driven by that one focus that you end up putting too much pressure on yourself to succeed and it, for me anyway um, it all just became too much so I found that actually going to study part time gave me another focus mm. which enabled me to, to enjoy my rugby more With there was almost less pressure on the rugby uh, the fact that I, I knew I was planning uh, something in the background with, with rugby it can, it can end in an instant yeah. you, you pick up a, 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 an injury that you cannot recover from and that's it like, mm. if, if you then had to retire with nothing behind you it's a a lonely place to be so taking the plunge into into education again was was definitely the, the best decision i made and i made that decision just before moving to jersey so i think four years ago now. sure well was there any particular person that influenced you to start planning for your future or, or is it something you realized that you had to be proactive about um i mean my parents uh, they constantly reminded me about it um but it, it was only until I had those injuries that I really, it, it was almost a light bulb switched on. I really realized that, look, this, this isn't forever. And the injuries were, were just brought me back to ground a little bit and, and made me realize that, look, like, this, this needs to happen. Otherwise, I could be one of those players that have to retire with, with nothing behind me in a, in a real dark place. So, yeah, probably my parents. But then, like you say, it's, it's that realization that this isn't forever and, and you need to sort of, get something in place. Mm. Have the coaches been supportive at the clubs you've been involved with? Uh, are they accommodating when it comes to training for games and gaining work experience at the same time? I, th- I think so. I mean, it's not... I think most of it has to come from you. you you're the one that needs to be proactive in in going to speak to people, mm. um, ne- networking yourself. But, I mean, the clubs the clubs are great. I mean, there were times in Jersey where I needed to miss a, tra- a training day, for instance, for an exam, and, and there was they had no issues in that whatsoever because they do, they do encourage you to do these things, but it's not it's 
not one of the club's priorities. It should be one of your own priorities mm-hmm. to be proactive in that in your um, in your own time. Uh, I mean, cause be, because we we have so much spare time that it, it's just it seems like a waste not to be proactive in that time mm-hmm. as well. But um, the clubs are very accommodating, and and if you ever if you were ever to ask the club, is there someone I can speak to? Mm-hmm. Uh, but they wouldn't hesitate to put you in contact with the right people. So, yeah, they are. They are very accommodating when, when you want them to be. Mm, fantastic. Well, in the squads at Ealing and even Jersey, how many of the players would you say are putting plans in place for careers after retirement? Is this something that is being taken seriously or not from, from what you have witnessed? I'd say it's, quite, it's 50-50, really. Um, the Jersey squad was quite a young squad, so there wasn't really many players that had reached that stage where they realised that they need to... They need to, to get something in place. I mean, the squad, the average age was maybe 22, 23, 24, around that age. Mm-hmm. So I'd say maybe 30% of the squad had, say, a degree or were uh, had something behind them or started something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, speaking to the boys, they all want, everyone wants to do it. Everyone, everyone has the, the plan in place in their head to, to start doing it, but it is, it is basically going out there and getting it done. But yeah, I'd say maybe... 50-50 at the moment. That's rather interesting. Well, Lewis, you recently uh, did some work placement. Tell us about the process you followed in securing this opportunity and was it helpful? When I went to Jersey, um, I was lucky enough to meet uh, an accountant who was willing to willing to help me out. Uh, his name was Paul Colshill. And uh, at the time, he worked for uh, a company called Bracken Rothwell. And that was an accountancy firm. And I managed to sort of secure... A, uh, a kind of part-time job so every Wednesday I'd go in to a full like an honest day's work so to speak and I, I continued to do that for two two years and, and then eventually moved to a law firm and, and experienced how a law firm this was different to an accountancy firm as well um, and that law firm was Benny Corbe Renouf and, and I'm so grateful to have had that opportunity and to have had that experience because um, like I say you can have you can have all the exams in the world but if you don't actually have that experience mm. no, no one not they're not really going to consider you. So I was really, really grateful. Um, I'm really lucky to be to have that opportunity. What are your interests, Lewis? What sort of a career path do you want to take after rugby? <laughs> it's so difficult. I mean, I'm studying uh, through the ACCA at the moment mm-hmm. uh, to do my accountancy qualifications. Okay. But I don't necessarily want to be an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another, another, another positive of being in London is, is the fact that I can hopefully speak to different companies, mm. uh, I don't know, management consultancies or uh, banks and just hopefully get a little bit of experience in a few different areas just to see just to see what I actually want to do because I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I mm. speak to my, uh, my uncle and my family about it and they, they say, look, even today I have no idea what I, what I want to do and I'm 50. So <laughs> it's just, sometimes it's just finding something that you're good at mm. And just throwing yourself in at the deep end, and things things will eventually work out. Um, I think, but I'm, at the moment, for me, my priority is literally just to just to be as proactive as I can, speak to as many people as possible. Being in London is going to be a massive positive because there hopefully be so many people that are willing to willing to help you out. And uh, we're lucky enough as professional rugby players that people really love the sport and they'd love to give you opportunities. Well, I'm pretty sure that the more work placement opportunities you get, it's going to make that decision a lot more easier. What other sort of work placement opportunities would you like to try to get? I suppose I'd like to... Like I said, I'd like to experience a few different roles. Um, I quite like the idea of consultancy. Again, I don't really know enough about these different jobs to be able to to be able to tell you that, to be honest. Which is exactly which is why I, I just want to to experience a few of them. I mean, I've I've experienced what it's like to be in a, an accountancy firm, and I've experienced what it's like to be in the finance team of a law firm, and. To be honest, they're not really roles that I'd, I'd want to pursue. I mean, as a rugby player, you're so used to being social. Um, I mean, you go to train every day and you're around the, your mates constantly. Um, and it's very people orientated. Mm. Um, so I'm hoping to find a role where it's more sort of client based, I suppose, mm. um, where you have a chance to build relationships and, and that type of role. I, again, I have no idea uh, what type of role that will be mm. or what type of company or what type of job it will be. But something that's more people orientated where you're, you're able to build relationship, relationships with people yeah. it would, would, would probably relate more to, to being a rugby player Well from the work experience you've had so far what skills as a professional rugby player have you found yourself drawing on when it comes to completing these tasks in a business type environment? It's surprising how many skills transfer to, 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 to the business world to be honest I mean mm-hmm. 
the skills on a rugby field, the communication, communication is is one of the most fundamental skills you're going to need in an office, say, mm-hmm. if you're working with people. Termination, efficiency with your time, all of these skills that you develop as a rugby player, the discipline that you need to be a rugby player, it, it all relates to that office life. Um, and I really I really believe employers understand that. Uh, well, the, uh, anyway, the, the employers that understand rugby will understand how the skills transfer into business life. And mm-hmm. again, I, I feel like that's, that's one of the reasons maybe that companies do give rugby players a chance uh, to, to prove themselves in, in their companies because they understand what skills uh, relate to business life. Well, Lewis, as a professional player in the RFU Championship, which is demanding of your time, what are some of the challenges you have encountered along the way? The rugby schedule is is intense as it is. Um, it's, it's a full time. We get maybe one weekday off a week. Uh, we play on a Saturday, mm-hmm. and every other day we're we're, we're in training. and And the hours uh, range from sort of in eight o'clock, finish at three mm-hmm. um, on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and a Friday, the lighter days, as is a day before a game. So. I mean, you, you think finishing at three o'clock, people will say, oh gosh, I mean, you have all the time in the world. And yeah, yeah, we do have a lot of free time, but mm. you don't understand uh, how taxing it is on your body, uh, how taxing it is mentally. Every week, you're fighting for a position in that team. Mm. So that does that does take its toll. And especially, I'd say it took its toll bef- a lot more before I started work experience, funnily enough. Even though getting up at sort of seven o'clock to go to work on a Wednesday in Jersey was was demanding and having to be in an office for for eight hours in a day was was tough Mm -hmm. uh don't get me wrong but it almost it made me appreciate what i had even more yeah i almost enjoyed rugby more because i realized how lucky i was Mm -hmm. um, if that makes any sense and it's a completely different feeling as well i mean you finish you finish a nine to five day at work and mentally mentally i I was completely drained mm-hmm. and I never felt anything like that but it's completely different with rugby because you get home after rugby and you're drained but you're drained physically instead of drained mentally mm-hmm. so it was it was quite strange and, uh, to to differ between the two. Brilliant. Well, Lewis, you came to the Rugby Business Network to seek some assistance through the Life After Rugby program. How did you hear about the organisation and why would you recommend other players to follow the same route as you? I heard about it through another player who was at Jersey, James Freeman. He he was put in contact with uh, Colm Hannon. And uh, after speaking to James about it, I realised that it was just a, just a great programme if you were serious about making that transition into business life. The programme is perfect for someone who is actively trying to find something uh, for themselves. Like like I said, it's, it's completely player-driven. Uh, no one else is going to be able to to tell you to do it you've got to want to do it yourself mm-hmm. and for those players out there that really do want to get something behind them it's absolutely perfect um, and the contacts that Com has in and around London and around the UK and around the world I imagine is just I mean it's just going to be able to even if it gives you an idea of what you want to do but the experience that they can offer mm-hmm. the, I mean the training that I've received LinkedIn training uh, I've had a psychometric test mm-hmm. I've been so I feel so lucky to be in contact with uh, the Rugby Business Network. It's just it's a platform to, to be able to make that transition. So, um, no, it's, the, the contacts are invaluable. Well, that is great to hear. Lewis, what final advice would you give to players who are about to start preparing for their life after rugby? And in the same breath, how could businesses or companies be more supportive to rugby players looking to gain work experience? For players, it's just about making that first step. Mm-hmm. It's, it's about signing up to do your first exam it's about making a phone call to a director of a business and just asking a question just being proactive enough just to take that first step and if, it, if it's the right time for you great then you go for it if not then at least you've made that phone call at least you've you've asked someone about it just mm-hmm. make that first step and for businesses to be honest the best the best way for if, if businesses are serious about starting to employ rugby players then the best way for businesses to do that is to come to the games is to come to watch the games and, and after the game come and speak to one of the players just mm. say hello I mean I know it's up to the player to, to also do the same but sometimes well players don't know who's who's running what business so mm-hmm. if, if businesses and people are serious about employing rugby players then I'd say the best way to do is, is 
go and come and speak to us in the bar after a game. So. Mm. Well, that is actually some fantastic advice. Lewis, the journey you are currently on in preparing for a career after rugby is commendable. Speaking about your experiences has been extremely helpful and I'm sure will inspire other professional players looking to begin preparing for their futures. And the Rugby Business Network wishes you all the best for the remainder of your transition into business and your playing career at Ealing Trail Finders. Thank you very much. Thank you.